Hi everyone, welcome back to another episode of Stats All Day with Dr. O'Day. My name is Connor, and today we're going to be walking through how to run and how to report a one sample t test using Jamovi. Now make sure to hit that like and subscribe. Please let me know if there's any content that you would like to see coming up or if you have any questions on this or any of my other videos. So one sample t-test, what we're doing here is we're seeing whether our sample differs from some larger value that we have. Now a lot of the times this value is some known parameter from um, uh, maybe the larger population, things like that. Now most often, especially in psychology, which I'm a psychology individual we don't have access to the entire population of people and so a lot of times what we're comparing to is some known criterion and so what that might mean is maybe you're a company and you know that the maybe you're a car sales um, place and you know that the average number of cars that you sell in a given month is say 50 and you know th then you implement some new sales procedure and you want to know is that sales procedure actually working so for the next few months you could compare your sales per like the number of cars that you sell each month to that criterion of 50. Now a lot of times we also might just compare things to say the midpoint of our scale. So sometimes we actually have a different type of a value in mind and this is what I actually do most in my own research if I run a one sample t-test. To be honest these are a little bit rare in my line of work. Um, however, a lot of times I'm, I might use something like a 1 to 5 Likert type scale, which is ranging from, as you can see here, strongly disagree to strongly agree. Now in the middle there is something like undecided or neutral. And so what I might ask is, are people generally more in favor of this particular thing, or are they generally less in favor? And so what I could do here is I could actually run a one sample t-test examining whether people's average views on this particular thing that I'm measuring differ from the midpoint of the scale and that would actually tell me are they generally more in favor of this thing or are they generally more against this thing. So here's a data file and this is from a study where we examined attitudes toward COVID-19. Now just as an example here I'm going to focus in on two of my variables here. The first is safety compliance and the second one is going to be support for individual freedom. So to run a one sample t-test, I'm going to come up here to t-tests and I'm going to click that drop down and we have a nice one that says one sample t-test here so I'm going to go ahead and click that. From here I just need to find the two variables that I'm interested in. You might be interested in more. Um, so for me it was individual freedom as well as safety compliance. So I'm going to move both of those variables into the dependent variable box and that's going to give you some output but we aren't quite ready to look at that output yet because over here I need to specify the test value. Now in this particular study individual freedom and safety compliance were both measured on a 1 to 9 scale and what I'm predicting here is that people are generally because COVID-19 is such a drastic and new phenomenon people are probably going to engage in lots of important safety procedures but they'll also because we live in America will also probably still value individual freedom and so those were both measured on a one strongly disagree to nine strongly agree scale and I want to see are people generally more in favor of these things or more against these things. So the midpoint of that 1 to 9 scale is 5. So that's what I'm going to type in as the test value. And what the stats are now going to tell me is whether my average from my sample significantly differs from 5. So I'm going to ask for a measure of effect size here. And I'm also going to ask for descriptives. Now let's go ahead and start with our descriptives. So we can see here that the average support for individual freedom is 5.92. So that is a little bit above 5. Now whether it's significant or not, the stats will tell us here in a minute. We can see that the standard deviation here was 1.82. So safety compli compliance here, we see that the average score was 7.51. The standard deviation was 1.76. And so I'm thinking here probably this one at least is going to be significantly greater than the midpoint of that scale. 
So then we come up and we look at our test statistic. We see that the T value for individual freedom is 7.77 and our P value is less than 0 0.001. So what this indicates is because that P value is less than 0 0.05, that indicates that yes, this is significant. And so what these stats are telling us is that this 5.92 is significantly greater, and we know it's greater just because the number is larger, so is significantly greater than 5. And so people are generally more in favor of individual freedom in America than they are against individual freedom. And we see that the effect size, this is Cohen's D, this is a, a standardized effect size here, which is telling us how many standard deviations different that is. And so what we can see here is this 0.92, that's about half a standard deviation larger, and that's what we're seeing right here. And so our conclusion here would be that people are roughly half a standard deviation larger on support for individual freedom than the midpoint of the scale. We see a much larger effect here with safety compliance. This was actually 1.43 standard deviations higher than the midpoint of the scale. Now some of you might be saying, okay, now I know that both of these are significant. What do I do with this information? So let's go ahead and let's go and let's write a results section on this. So I'm going to go ahead and pop that over here and I have written out a sample results section that we could use for this. So what I say here and whenever we write results, we always start with our hypotheses. So we always are starting with those hypotheses here. And so I say, due to the extreme health risks that COVID-19 has posed to people in modern society, I predicted that people would generally report greater adherence to safety procedures, while at the same time valuing individual freedoms that Americans find so important. Now, in an actual results section, you might want to cite some literature and things like that. These are just hypotheses that I threw onto the page for the purposes of this um, video. But again, you want to start out with your hypotheses, even though you've already said them in your intro, you want to remind your reader at all stages of your paper. That way they don't forget and they don't have to look back. You always want to help your reader out to understand this. The next thing you do is tell the reader how you're going to test that hypothesis. So to test this hypothesis, I conducted two one-sample t-tests. So we did it all at once, but these are actually two separate tests over here. So I conducted two one-sample t-tests in which safety compliance, that was my first variable there, and support for individual freedom were compared to the midpoint of the one strongly disagree to nine strongly agree scale. And the midpoint there was five. So I'm actually telling the reader what I compared these values to. To examine whether people were generally more in favor, more against, or more neutral on these attitudes. Now one of the things is I'm giving the reader quite a bit of information here. Depending on how many words a particular journal might allow, depending on the length of the paper that I'm allowed here, I might cut some of this because it is technically in the method section. But this would kind of be the ideal what you would want to tell your reader. Then you want to tell your reader what you found. So consistent with my hypotheses, participants reported significantly greater safety compliance and I give the mean and the standard deviation here. Make sure you always italicize all non-Greek letters. So we're italicizing the P, we're italicizing the T, we're italicizing the D, the M, the SD. So I'm saying the mean was 7.51, standard deviation was 1.76. Again, I'm getting those values right over here. I say T with 233 degrees of freedom, you can see that that value was taken from right here, is equal to 21.90, which is the statistic right here. So I'm saying T with 233 degrees of freedom was equal to 22, 21.90. My P value was less than 0 .001, which we're seeing right there. And D was equal to 1.43, we're seeing that right there. And then so after that, so if you're if you're reporting multiple lines of stats, I, I, I call this a line of stat here. Um, if you're doing multiple lines of stats, you want to kind of separate them before you move on with your sentence with a semicolon here. So again, participants reported significantly greater safety compliance. We'll throw in the line of stats to support that sentence and support for individual freedom 
we'll throw in the line of supports uh, stats that'll support that than the midpoint of the scale. So what we just told our reader was we found consistent with our hypotheses that people are in support of safety compliance and also supportive of individual freedom here in America. Well, that's all I have for today. Make sure again to hit that like and subscribe. And if you have any questions, please let me know. I'm more than happy to answer them. Otherwise, have a great rest of your day.